It is hard to be prescriptive. Blood cultures are never a routine investigation. However, any patient fulfilling the sepsis criteria should have samples collected. As a simple rule of thumb, if you think that your patient is ill enough to warrant IV antibiotics, they should have a blood culture, ideally before the antibiotics are started. However, you will come across patients who are not apparently hugely septic. Typically patients with endocarditis and often patients with deep infections such as discitis can have quite subtle signs of infection, but nevertheless the blood culture is a crucial investigation. A few microbes picked up during sample collection, either from your own or the patient's skin, can result in a contaminant. These microbes will grow rapidly in the blood culture medium and to begin with the laboratory won't be able to say whether this is a genuine infection or a false positive. Often when confronted with this we have to start some additional antibiotics until that data comes through. This will expose your patient to additional risks of allergy and potentially Clostridium difficile diarrhoea. First choose an anticupital phosphavane. Femoral stabs or samples collected via indwelling lines are more likely to be contaminated. Femoral stabs in particular have a very high frequency of contamination. This part of the body has a very heavy bacterial flora and is very difficult to decontaminate successfully. Such samples should only be taken if there really is no option. Occasionally we do need blood cultures via lines. This would be in patients with particularly precious lines such as Hickman's in the oncology unit or the dialysis unit where we're trying to preserve that line and need to know if it is infected or not. In other circumstances the key to getting a clean blood culture is maintaining a high standard of asepsis during sample collection. To help you with this we've introduced a blood culture pack across the trust. Since that has been introduced we've seen the level of contamination in our blood cultures drop from around 10% down to 3%. This has saved us a huge amount of time, not only in the lab, but also on the wards, and has avoided exposing patients to unnecessary treatments. The extra work involved in taking a sample properly is not an excuse for not collecting the sample. We know that taking two sets rather than one will increase our overall detection rate by about 20%. Two sets also helps us to distinguish contaminants from genuine infections and is generally regarded as best practice. While a prior treatment with antibiotics will reduce the yield of blood cultures, they still have a utility. For example, they will detect microbes that are resistant to the antibiotic you've given. It's only a rare circumstance that really warrants giving antibiotics before blood cultures. For example, a patient with fulminating meningococcemia in whom any delay could potentially jeopardise life, is this essential. Blood lactate is a useful marker of sepsis. It checks for tissue hyperperfusion, which is often present in the septic patient. Document, both in the notes and the sepsis pathway, if applicable, that blood cultures have been taken. If you have had to take a sample from a femoral stab or a line, make sure that goes into the notes as well. That can be very helpful if we are trying to decide whether this could be a contaminant. <laughs>